Food is a reflection of our history and identity. The way we grow, prepare and consume it is rooted deeply in our cultural heritage. Yet how can we as travelers really learn about this part of the culture when cooking classes seem a bit commercial and restaurants don't show the whole picture? Well, there might be a way, but only if you are brave enough to ask. I'm really not sure how we got ourselves into the situation, but today we're cooking together with a Turkish grandma and we don't speak the same language. We don't even know what we're making, so... I guess get ready for a true Turkish food experience filled with incredible tastes, confusion and even tears. Life is pain! <laughs> Our adventure today begins in Mersin, a city on Turkey's southern coast. And I feel that I need to give you a bit more of a backstory so that you would understand how such a unique adventure actually came to be. We visited the city before, about a year ago, and as last time we truly enjoyed the time spent here, it wasn't a hard decision to once again stop and say hello to some old friends. Sounds like a chill and relaxed visit, right? Well, little did we know that Mersin had much bigger plans for us this time. Our friend Özden welcomed us with open arms. A whole year had passed, but it felt like we never left. He invited us in and soon we found ourselves having breakfast on the balcony. It was delicious and as the conversation grew around the topic, we jokingly told us then that for years we have wanted to learn cooking from a Turkish grandma. Özden gave no reply. He simply picked up his phone, made few calls, and then said this. I know what, you, what you're gonna cook. <laughs> and you're gonna love it. Yeah. Wait, what? Judging from our voices, I guess neither of us thought that this was real. Okay guys, it's, it's finally happening. We have been trying to find this experience for a year. But as the breakfast ended, we understood that it was actually happening. She's waiting for us. She's waiting we're, for us. We're gonna head over there. Our attitude changed and well, we were not too good at hiding our excitement. It's happening, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening, it's happening. Esther also gets rid of the tourists for a second. <laughs> we drove a little, stopped to grab some fresh veggies from a local store, drove a little more, and again, stop. This was the place, the place where grandma lives. It's happening, it's happening. It's happening. As we got to the door, we were nervous. Everything about the situation was new to us. This is how I understand all people. The ring bell. Yeah. <laughs> but least did we expect that there would be no one home. Fortunately, the neighbors had a spare key and Özden was able to let us in. I think mom isn't home yet, so we're kind of breaking and entering. We had a quick moment to snoop around the apartment. You know, filming the kind of stuff we would not dare while the homeowner was watching. Joe! Yes? Okay, this one's for you. Suddenly, a movement from the door. It felt a tiny bit strange. You know, they just don't teach in school how to welcome someone to their own home as a complete stranger. Yet luckily, Östen also realized our struggle. Feel free, come on, come on. Don't, don't stand there just like that. Feel free, guys, come on. Officially greeting Östen's mom, Melosh, and her friend, Nuray. My name is Nuray. Definitely made us feel less anxious. Yeah, two Aslan. times kisses, don't forget, in Turkey. And after talking for a few moments, Melos asked me a question I had never heard before. Would I like to see a Turkish grandma's freezer from inside? Boy, it sounded interesting. But well, to honor her privacy and respect cultural boundaries, we kindly declined. Okay, just kidding. Imagine if we had said no to such a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And it was glorious. Peppers, beans, eggplant. 
the freezer was packed from top to bottom with veggies all now simply waiting to turn into something delicious. I, I think <laughs> if, if you tell your grandma that you are not hungry, they're going to be extremely sad. So you should never tell your grandma that you're not hungry. Just as we started to feel more comfortable, Özden told us his master plan. And now we're all on our own. Yep, that sneaky smile meant that our friend, who just happened to also be our translator, was leaving. Like this started the second phase of our adventure. Two Turkish grandmas and two Estonian travelers, not even able to speak the same language, working together for the same goal, to make something delicious. Or at least that's what we thought was the goal. Because instead of cooking, and before we cook, we first eat the uh, second breakfast. No, we will not eat anymore. So you should never tell your grandma that you're not hungry. And when we said that we were full, Melos decided that there are other ways yeah. to show kindness to her guests. It's too much. Uh, she wants to give us her, her jewelry. We try to kindly decline for many times, but still she showered us with gifts. Oda the hediye, gift. One gift, one gift. And once everyone had received the gift, it seemed like the pleasantries were finally handled, which meant it was time to begin oh. the cooking. One, one two, two, three, three four! <laughs> Everything started moving fast, and with the help of Google Translate, Nura gave me a few easy tasks, washing vegetables and cleaning. But it didn't take long to prove my worth. And only minutes later, I was trusted a knife. My new job, potato handler. Well, grandma sure no talent when they see it. Because another five minutes later, I was promoted to be a pepper slicer. Yet while I was busy climbing the career ladder and sucking up to my new bosses, there of course was other things happening around me. For example, Lisa's career in Grandma's Kitchen started slowly. Now I'm the useless one. Her job church took long and when she finally found a job, <coughs> then... Already crying. The fresh village onions had other plans in mind. Life is pain. <laughs> Yet Lisa's incapability to hold the job gave her a new chance to see things from distance. So for the first time, we learned what we are actually making. Our two main dishes were going to be tepsi kebab and karne yarak. You can find the names and recipes to those dishes in the description of this video. Because I doubt anyone could follow the instructions after seeing what was about to happen in grandma's kitchen. After about 20 minutes of small-scale chaos and running around, our team of four solo artists suddenly transformed into a quartet. We found a rhythm and were finally working as a team. Each member had their own specific tasks. Mine mostly assigned due to my anatomy. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, well, being tall is international. If you're tall, you're gonna get the things off the top shelf. We mixed, molded, I'm putting my tears in here, <laughs> and grady. And over time, even communicating became easier. I thought it was gonna be so much harder to find the same language, but I guess cooking is such an international thing that you don't need words. It's just body language, smiles, and yeah, it's a language by itself. Once we had nailed down the basics, we were liberated, all of us, finally felt comfortable around each other. And at this moment, we started to show our true colors. It's stormy and rainy outside, but in here in the kitchen. Well, and how do the true colors of two Turkish ladies look like? The kitchen filled with laughter and joy. We danced, singed, and shared the happiness of making food. It was hard to believe 
that only an hour ago we had been total strangers, not even able to speak the same language. But now, well, I guess language just isn't the only way to make new friends. And sometimes actions really matter more than words. <laughs> you say <laughs> Buban Nurai Kara. My name is Nurai. Send you to bed. Spices were flying, and the room slowly filled with mouth-watering aroma. The smells in the kitchen, they're just... Ah. I jokingly even asked the ladies if their beautiful laughter and joy are also the secret to delicious Turkish food. But I guess body language and Google Translate still have their limitations. Because instead of understanding the compliment, they told me that most good chefs are serious people. And the real secret to good food comes from local fresh produce, by which they meant that everything we cook today comes from small farms around the city. I oh. thought it was a little soft to be a part of the... <laughs> it shows that it's organic. I can't be sure if it took us one or even two hours to get to this point, but one by one, our small jobs started to run out. All of the dishes we had made found a place in either hot oven or a frying pan to simmer. <laughs> and then, just like clockwork... And look who's back! That, that means that in 10 minutes we're gonna eat. We're ready yep, for that's him. what I'm here for. <laughs> so what are we eating, guys? Oh... Wow, this is amazing. You did this. It was quite a challenge waiting in a room filled with such good smells and gorgeous dishes. But luckily, there were still ways to be useful. Look at that! We prepared the table, played it the food, and then it was time. Everybody gathered around the table. It was easy to understand how important part in Turkish culture plays the ritual of eating. It's family time, a time to connect and share. We felt proud knowing that our little hands had been a part of making something so special. And the tastes? Well, what do you think? Let me hold this so you can work on it. Yet as I sat there, enjoying one of the best meals of my life, I can't believe we were part of cooking this. I suddenly realized my mistake. I had messed up when dreaming and thinking about the opportunity to cook with a Turkish grandma, I always thought that this adventure would be about food. You know, learning about secret ingredients and old techniques. Don't get me wrong, we did learn a little bit about that. And then a mystery ingredient of uh, like a red paste that I didn't get. <laughs> so the secret ingredient, the red secret ingredient, it's concentrated tomato paste, just so you know. But much more importantly, it taught us about the importance of communication. We experienced firsthand the power of words and how simply talking about our dreams can make them come true. I know what, you, what you're gonna cook. <laughs> and you're gonna love it. Yeah. Yet we also saw how some languages don't even need words and how our bodies can tell more than thousand words could. Because never ever did I think that I would say those three words to any other grandma but my own. Ben de, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Wow. I love you. <laughs> so there it is, my friends. Ask proudly, dream loudly, and smile with your whole heart. Thank you for watching. And if you also have Turkey in your travel bucket list, don't forget to check the link in the description where you can purchase your own Turkish travel guide designed to make your journey in this country as easy and affordable as possible. Bye.